Hello and welcome back to another episode of Rome Total War, the Spanish Very Hard Campaign. Last time we took Capio off the Scipii, which was a huge success. I was happy to kick the Scipii off of Italy. However, we lost Exantia Bilbilis, our best general, and we lost all of our bull warriors. In the process, the three or four turns of last part, we lost like 25,000 denarii because we're just hemorrhaging money. We're paying for tons of armies right now since we're defending Northern Italy, Southern Italy, Palma from this scary Carthaginian elephant army, and we're defending Northern Spain from invading Gauls. So we're paying for way too many armies. We lost trade with Tingi, our favorite trading partner, which generated over 2,000 denarii per turn because the Carthaginians started a war with us, the idiots. And we're generally surrounded by Romans and in a very scary place. But I'm going to fix all these issues in one part with my step-by-step -step plan. Step one, kill the elephant army. This Carthaginian army on Palma is scary. I'm horrified of fighting elephants on very hard difficulty because I don't want to lose this whole army and lose Palma. But we just got to do it. We have to beat them because this army is totally wasted sitting here on Palma. We have basic fleet superiority. So once we control the Mediterranean, Palma will be safe. We just need to get this army off of Palma and then we can reassign these troops to doing more productive things like fixing the economy. Next, we want to get rid of all of these Roman armies. I don't want to lose Rome and Capua to these armies, which I very easily could if I'm not careful. So I need to kill these armies in the fields somehow without being too expensive and just get them out of this part of the world so I can focus on rebuilding. Finally, we need to fix the economy. So once that army is freed up from Palma, instead of building units in all of these cities, like I was planning on doing, I'm just gonna grab the troops that were on Palma, send them over to Tingi, take this back, reestablish trade and fix the economy. Now, the reason I haven't just destroyed this Carthaginian army, which is the only reason this army is here, is because they have two units of elephants. If I know anything about elephants, it can cause almost any army to rout. And I cannot handle losing this whole army or losing Palma back to the Carthaginians because Palma is strategically very important for me. It's where I train many of my boats. It gives me eyes on parts of the Mediterranean to make sure that we're not being snuck up on in Spain. Overall, it's very important for me. So I definitely want to keep Palma, but I cannot keep paying for this whole army. I mean, look how expensive these units are to maintain across an entire army. This is part of the reason my economy is so horrible. So the first thing I'm gonna do today is destroy this Carthaginian army and whatever losses I take, it will be worth it because we cannot keep paying for this army here. Now, luckily, this army fled. So instead of taking battle here, it now has nowhere to run if it loses the battle. So any units that flee from this battle will just disband, which is the advantage or disadvantage of fighting on a tiny island like Palma. So let's take another look at this army. Most of it is pretty flimsy. I mean, they have several units of Libyan spearmen, which are pretty good. Attack of five, defense of 16, those are pretty decent. But they don't have a general. And their only two really good units are the two units of elephants, which if they make contact with my army, will basically rout my whole army. So my plan is try and break as much of the army as possible before I reach the elephants. Because I think some people don't really know this, but elephants can break. They don't just have well and happy and amok as their two states. They can also break and just flee off the battlefield. So hopefully that will be possible in this battle. Have faith in Lawn of Munda, have faith. Oh, this is a very peculiar starting position. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen this before. It's like this little sliver instead of a proper space to draw up on. That's so strange, I love it. How weird. All right, here's what we're gonna do. Let's take four units of naked fanatics and have them be our front line. Four more units will kind of guard the flank. Behind them, we will have our bull warriors so they can get their javelins in at whatever they encounter. Same thing with the Spanish mercenaries. And then we're gonna have all of our cavalry over here, and we're going to use our cavalry a little bit riskily in this battle. Because we want to do everything in our power to start a route as early as possible. Hopefully the elephants are not at the front of the army. If they are, I don't really know what I'm going to do, but we're just going to have to make this work because we cannot afford this army just sitting on Palma anymore. Okay, so we have elephants on the right flank and on the left flank. So I'm thinking we might just want to charge into the center of the army and hopefully cause a break. 
And let's take our cavalry and push them forward. We want to try and headhunt for the enemy commander just to help make a route happen. Let's see. The general is actually pretty far forward. If we can cause a fight with him, break the general and kill him, that will be very helpful. Let's see if we can do that. The elephants are kind of going for a trip, so that's good. Let's use Battle Cry on all of our naked fanatics. Give them an extra 10 damage. And let's just send absolutely everyone to come kill this general's unit. The enemy general's dead, so that's great. We have one break. Let's pull our generals back a little bit now. We don't want to overextend them. And let's just make sure that we're... Oh yeah, we've got a general route already going. This is good. Oh yeah. Wow, the whole army's breaking. Let's just reassign all of our troops. Make sure that every single unit that we can find is breaking. We want to break the whole army while we can. And then once all these units are broken, hopefully the elephants will break as well. Perfect. Love this. And then hopefully the elephants will come over now. Feel the pressure. Let's send all of our infantry to attack the elephants. And if we overwhelm them enough and we have enough routing units around them, hopefully, hopefully they just panic and... Oh, they're wavering. Please break. Oh, they're routing, yeah. They're routing! Woo! All right, let's see if we can hunt them down. We don't want to get hit in the side by all these. Let's just fight off these slingers, this cavalry. Make sure that we don't accidentally lose this battle just because we're not paying attention. And I set my cavalry to run down the elephants. Let's see if they reach them in time. I guess it doesn't really matter because they're walking off the field. They'll just despawn after this battle. But let's go ahead and get all of our infantry back over here to deal with this cavalry. Let's get our cavalry to kill these slingers that are just staying a little bit out of range. We want as many breaks as possible. Come on guys, why are we not faster? Okay, we got another break, fantastic. Let's continue just breaking all of the enemy. I don't care about mopping up these routing troops. I just want them all gone. And then let's immediately send all of the infantry after the elephants. Because we want to fight the elephants while there are routing units on the field so that they have a chance of breaking. Let's kind of get behind the elephants with this cavalry. We want to encircle them as much as possible and make them freak out. They're shaken, but not broken. Oh, this general marches in there. He's going to die. Come on. Elephants are shaken. Come on. They're broken. Okay, fantastic. We did it. <laughs> just like that. I thought this would be much harder. And I would love to see some elephants just getting run down. See, they just, they die pretty much like routing cavalry or anything else. Not as quickly, but look, they're just they're just falling. So that's a great way to deal with elephants. <laughs> I was really scared about that army. But I guess there was no need to be. Okay, what is routing right now? Oh, we have this you know, cavalry that's just causing issues. They've reformed somewhat. They've got a couple units. Let's just mop up the last few units. They have no chance of winning this. They're just kind of backed up against a wall, so they're trying anything. Yeah, and they're broken. Let's attack these round shield cavalry, come on. They're wavering. Come on, just break. Broken, okay. And what is left? Oh, the elephants reformed. Okay, come on. They're wavering. We really need to deal with these elephants. Which elephants are these? Are these the second ones? 
Let's just send everyone after the elephants. I'm going to speed this up. I want to make sure they get off the battlefield. Yeah, let's end the battle. This is a great victory. That's a fantastic result. We lost 200 men and we killed two units of elephants. I definitely thought I was just going to outright lose that. So I'm very happy. And that army disappears. Fantastic. Lan of Munda received a veteran warrior. Fantastic. And let's go ahead and send this fleet over here. And I have a plan for this army. The reason I wanted to free it up is not just to free it up. Obviously, that's nice. But I want to send it to take Tingi off the Carthaginians over here. Because this city was worth so much money in trade. We were trading, I think, 2,000 a turn just with Tingi before we were at war with Carthage. And since we've been at war, we've just been losing that money. So I'm just going to take that for myself. Take that trade for myself and start taking cities off of Carthage because they dared to mess with me. All right, part one of the plan, complete. Next, the Romans. This is going to be significantly harder. I'm retraining all of my Longshield Cavalry in Capua, and I'm building a unit of Scutarii because that's the best I can train in Capua. I'm tempted to send some... Yeah, I'll send some Longshield Cavalry down to Capua. It's a little bit... It's a little bit scary. Um, are we training everything... We need to in a room of the radium. Yeah, we are. Let's make sure we're training up a unit in each of these cities. We are. We have Longshield Cavalry going up. And let's send back our Bull Warriors to Rome. And in Rome, we can retrain those. No, it's expensive, but we got to do it. And then in Capua, we can go ahead and build a tavern. At some point, we will want to knock down this awesome Temple of Saturn, but not at this point. And the last thing to do in Spain is we have this Gallic army, which has been pushing in. Looks decent, has some decent heavy infantry, but we just need to get them out of here because otherwise they'll push into Numantia and we'll never catch them again. So let's go ahead and fight them in the field. All right, so in this battle, let's pull up our bull warriors as our front line. We'll back them up with naked fanatics on either side. We'll put our Balearic Slingers behind our front line because they have a bit of high ground over the rest of the troops, so they should be able to fire over them. In fact, we'll pull up our front line a little bit for that purpose. Just make sure our Slingers can fire clean over their heads. Then we'll put our Spanish Mercenaries on the flank and kind of very thickly stacked because they don't do very well with morale. But if they're this thickly stacked, they'll be okay. Then behind the Naked Fanatics, since they don't have any projectile weapons of their own, we'll put the rest of the Spanish Mercenaries. Make sure everyone is on fire at will. And we'll keep the Cavalry in reserve in case we're needing them for a flank or to just guard our flank. We'll just kind of hang out. Let's keep the general kind of central for the morale bonus. Perfect. And let's start the battle. If they could come to us, I would prefer that. Um, looks like they're a little heavier on the left side than the right, so let's send this unit of Spanish mercenaries over here. We do have our cavalry over here to reinforce as well. All right, what's on the side over here? Looks like Warband. Oh, we got Swordsman on the side over here and Chosen Swordsman over here, so I'm glad I reinforced this side a little bit. Let's... Make sure everything is good. It looks like they might just kind of charge into the front with their general. If he could kill him, that would be fantastic. Our slingers are already firing. You never know. Spanish mercenaries are in place. And we want to make sure we use war cry before the fight. So let's do that now. Perfect. They will now have 10 higher attack. And honestly, let's charge into them because... We have 10 higher attack when we're using Warcry for 30 seconds. We may as well use it. We're firing off all of our javelins from the Bull Warriors and the Spanish Mercenaries. And our Naked Fanatics are steady. They're shaken. Let's pause. Let's pull our General forward and use Rally Troops. We don't want these units to break. They're doing a ton of damage because they have that Warcry going. But let's not overextend. So let's push our Spanish Mercenaries forward. We want all of our troops pushing forward and attacking. Just provide some morale bonuses to the Naked Fanatics, which are a little bit surrounded at the moment. 
shaken, steady. Wavering, yeah, one of our units is wavering. That's not good. Okay, we're going to push in with our general and see if we can prevent this from breaking just by reinforcing back to shaken. Okay, let's pull our general out. Okay, we have a break. We'll pull our general out, but we'll keep the rest of our infantry here. Hopefully these swordsmen on the flank will break as well. Yeah, they're wavering. We have a break on the other sides. Do any of our are any of our units breaking? No, not the moment. But I would expect there might be a break soon. Because these chosen swordsmen will cause issues. Um, let's go ahead and kill their general with mine, because all of these units are just fleeing, so as well. We're here, we're doing well. Once we kill this general, everything will be better. He's dead. That will cause lots of morale issues, and let's push into the side of these chores and swordsmen. We just want to kill them as quickly as possible. Oh, we have a break over here. Okay. Let's send our general over here. We have one unit left. They broke as well. Our cavalry reformed. Let's see if we can kind of salvage this. We'll send our bull warriors to go deal with all of these units. There's not much left. Let's send our long shield cavalry back. And let's check on over here. Everyone's eager. Yeah, we're, we're quickly killing these chosen swords, but it won't be that big of an issue. Spanish mercenaries have reformed. I'm not too worried about these chosen swordsmen. They'll take some damage from javelins. And then let's attack them from every angle. We'll have our slingers skirmish. And these chosen swordsmen will break. They're shaken. They haven't broken yet, but they will. Over here, incredibly, these Chosen Swordsmen have not broken. I mean, their morale is just ridiculous. They're still steady. They're outnumbered like four to one, and they're still steady. Our Bull Warriors have defeated this unit. Let's send them back to deal with these Chosen Swordsmen. And over here, we did kill the other unit. Let's send our Longshield Cavalry to clean up these Swordsmen. We'll send our General in to help with the Chosen Swordsmen over here. And most of the army did get away. A lot of these warband type units, um, they fled. Let's see if we can't catch them because they're moving pretty slow and they have a lot of the battlefield left to clear. These units have absolutely no morale, so they would break really easily if we just slammed into the rear of them. But just to be safe, I'll use rally troops so the general falls back a little bit. Yep, they've broken already. Let's go up to the front one and see if we can clean them up. Can we stop them from fleeing? Not quite. That's okay. We'll clean up as many as we can. That's a lot of kills. And we killed 92% of the enemy and killed their leader. So they will go ahead and despawn off the campaign map. And go ahead and end the battle. We did lose 589 troops. Kind of unfortunate, but most of those were mercenaries and a couple naked fanatics. It's okay. We'll send Etor back to Oska for some repairs. And I would like to get some of these fleets out of the water. Let's kill Admiral Canaeus. And let's take out this Gallic Navy. We just want to sink as many of these ships as possible. Make sure none of them have armies on them. We can't quite reach them this turn, but we'll get them next turn. We've got a lot of ships in the water at the moment, so I'm very happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and end the turn and see what the Romans do. Hopefully they don't counterattack against Capua, but we'll just have to see. Yeah, that huge army is besieging Capua. It's kind of horrifying. Looks like they don't really have legionaries yet, so that's okay. All right, we're going to sally forth and try and just do some damage with our slingers maybe start a route with the cavalry if we're lucky i'm not really you know confident that this will work but we're just going to try something and when you have this many slingers you may as well use them so luckily we have these huge stone walls we would never be able to build them but they gave them to us so thank you let's put our slingers up on the walls just in case they can reach and put another unit here and another unit here. And then we'll throw, I don't know, Scutarii up as well, in case they can throw some javelins in at some point. 
They don't have any siege equipment that can get in the gates, so I'm not too worried about them actually counterattacking. But let's send our cavalry out one of the gates. Yeah, out the side gate. Not that we know we'll use them, but we might. We'll send them out of the city. And our slingers are actually firing right now. This will do a lot of damage. Yeah. Build 12 Hastati here with the first volley. And 14 Principes, so this is working. Before they reposition as many slings as we can throw, we will. Let's get all of our ammo out. Not really sure what the plan is here. They've actually stepped in range of this tower. So this unit of Principes is just taking damage from the towers as well. And our Scutarii are actually getting involved. Look at that. We just took out 15 Principes. They'll use all of their Javelins. And they're in the range of this tower as well. Incredible. I love Romans. They're so smart. If the Scutarii are out of ammo, we'll send them off the walls. No need for them to be there. And I'm just going to speed this up and let's watch the Roman army just sit in front of our towers and die. Right? I love this. This is my favorite type of battle with the Romans. <laughs> you know, I was worried about this army. Today's a lucky day. Their AI is just top-notch. Best AI in any RTS game. How many How many have we killed? We've killed 33% of the enemy army already. Amazing. <laughs> are, these, are these ballistas doing anything? They're not even trying to use these ballistas. I would at least fire at the archers or something. Are they taking fire arrows? They are They're taking fire arrows over here. All right, let's check on the army. This Roman archer's unit has lost 70 men. This Triari has lost almost 100. Principes have lost 100. Stadi have lost over 100. This unit has lost 132. 120 here. And they don't have a general, they just have their Equites, so there's not a general that we need to worry about killing. We burned up one of their ballistas, I've never seen that before. <laughs> Both of them? Sorry guys. Fantastic. Alright, we're just going to sit here for as long as it takes for them to relocate, and then at some point I'll send my cavalry in and just mop up whatever is left, because at this point I probably could. Killed... Almost half of the enemy army. We've killed 69% of the enemy. Nice. To be fair, I had a similar experience attacking Capua. I mean, I fought for the city with blood, sweat, and tears, so... They can do the same, it's okay. The towers have stopped firing. Nope, they're back. There might not have been enough people in front of them. This is crazy. I wanna get them to 85% with just the towers. What happens if you end the sally and they've lost 85% of their troops? Are they, are they fleeing? They're fleeing, <laughs> okay. I don't think we can catch them with cavalry. I don't need to, though. We'll, we'll send our uh, cavalry out. I probably should have kept them somewhat nearby. I was just having so much fun watching them. Oh, look at this field of green soldiers. Fantastic. Was that cheap? Maybe. But, you know, they're able to just spawn armies overnight. They don't have to follow the rules that I do, so that can be a little bit cheap. All right, let's see if our cavalry is anywhere near catching up. No. Fortunately. It's okay. <laughs> we'll let them leave. 
They lost 78% of the army. The enemy. Heroic victory. We killed 2,081 of them. That's what you get for attacking Capua. I mean, it's a costly thing to do. You gotta bring more troops on that. We, shall rule. we actually got two trade increases from just that. We got plus one command for Gregory. And a famous warrior for Gregory. One of the people in one of those towers must have been recruited as a famous warrior. General. Fantastic. I'm tempted to just march south now and just start taking these cities, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do the smart thing. Let's take our Longshield Cavalry and chase them because this army is super weak right now. How unhappy is Capua? Yeah, they're unhappy. You'll be fine. We'll build some. We'll build some some slingers. I'm I'm actually a huge fan of slingers now. <laughs> Let's get some more slingers going, and I'll send these bull warriors down to Capua. That's good enough. And let's finish off Captain Decimus. Oh my goodness, this is all that's left. Oh, brutal. I want to kill every last one of them. No survivors. All right, let's. Let's see, where did they draw up? And I think since they with already withdrew from a battle this turn, even though they were besieging me, they don't have the option to flee this battle either. So that's pretty epic. Let's set our unit formation to loose because they do have ballistas and they have the uphill advantage, so they could just fire down on us. We don't want that. Honestly, these units, some of these are so weak. I kind of just want to charge. Well, no, no. We're going to be smart. We're going to be careful. Let's let's do a little flanky flank. We want to be on the side of these ballistas so we can get them out of the game early. And then on this side, we will have our general to keep him safe from the ballistas. And also, because there's more infantry over here, we want the general there just in case there's any morale issues. I doubt there will be, but, you know, be prepared for anything. Let's speed it up a little bit. We'll see if this ballista starts firing. I really hope not. But they're not really facing the right direction because we're kind of parting the waters here. Yeah, they're not firing yet. Okay, they're going to try and fire now. Or they're, they're moving maybe? I don't know. But let's... I mean, they can't have good morale here. But let's go ahead and attack these ballistas. Attack these equides and the Hastati. From here, we'll go up here and attack these. These two units will attack the Principes. This unit can go for the War Dogs. So let's just kind of send everyone in. We'll send our general to get a little closer. Yeah, their heavy infantry is broken already. This is not going to go well for them. I don't see how they could possibly survive this. Another break, another break, another break. Yeah. They get it, they eat goats because they're they're mountain people because there's mountains in Spain. Get it. <laughs> Fantastic. Cleaned up the rest of the army. Looks like we take about 100, 150 casualties. I'm cool with that. Let's end the battle. Oh, it took 87. That's not bad. So that enemy army routes. And I'm tempted to just go up and take out Caption Tertius here. But, hmm, can we handle them? Let's see, we'll send this unit. Oh, we can't send it anywhere. Here's what we'll do. We'll reinforce this army with three units of Longshore Cavalry for Rome. And then we'll reinforce Rome with three units of Longshore Cavalry from Aratium. And I bet I could take Captain Tertius here, if he's willing to fight. Oh, he has Legionaries and Traarii. No, we'll, we'll withdraw for now. If he wants to attack us, we'll have a little advantage, but I don't want to chase him down and lose my army. And look at that end of turn report. I mean, this includes Sack and Capua, I believe. So this isn't, I guess, totally honest that we profited 11,000 denarii that turn. We're still losing money. But once we take um, Tingi off the Carthaginians and hopefully disband a few units, take Tarentum and Croton, our economy will be doing a lot better. Now, I had been training up some more units in Spain 
to take over to Tingi previously before I realized that I could just use the army on Alma. So I'm going to cancel those recruitments. We now just have some extra troops in Spain. It's not the worst thing in the world. Let's send them up to reinforce the army in Oscar because it's getting a bit a bit weak at this point. We'll keep the Scutarii down here. And send them up to send them up to Oscar. We want that nice and strong. We'll send these bull warriors up to Oscar. And Etor will replenish a little bit with that army once they reach up there. Now this fleet with the marauding army from Palma, let's go ahead and bring it over to this port. We want to keep it as safe as possible in case we encounter some insane huge fleet that we don't know about. Let's see, can we reach this? No, we can't reach that Gaul. Let's just attack these Romans. And we'll attack them again. We don't want any Romans in our waters. Perfect. All right, let's end the turn and see if this Roman army attacks Gurgery. Nope, no attack. All right, let's take this fleet and push it a little bit closer. Next turn, we'll be able to land in front of Tingi. And let's check what happened in Italy. So we have another small army here, not really to be worried about. Let's send some... Oh, we can't quite reach Gurgery. Let's send... I want to send some slingers over to Gurgury so he can take on this army safely. We'll send a few units of slingers, bull warriors, that kind of stuff. And then we'll just send this cavalry over to Capua to keep them satisfied. And next turn, we can reinforce Gurgury with some missile troops and hopefully take out this Spruity Eye army. We finish our tavern in Capua. We'll build a bardic circle. Public order here is not very good, so we need it as high as possible. I'm so proud of this. We profited 3,400 Narni that turn while paying for construction and without any sacking of cities. So something is clearly working. I'm very happy with that. We have a lot of ships over by Italy, which I'm not super thrilled about. I eventually want to get rid of all of these. Once the economy is a little bit better, we'll build another fleet to keep over here. We send some ships that way. I think I might. Let's first chase off this Gallic Navy. We'll get them next turn. And then we'll send this fleet over to deal with some of these Roman ships. Because the whole plan here is once I consolidate Italy, I can kind of not stock these cities very heavily with troops. Because if I control the navy, they won't be able to land any armies here. Okay, we'll bring Etor over to Oska, retrain these two units of naked fanatics and these bull warriors, and we'll keep marching these armies north. Reunite with Oska. All right, let's end the turn, see what happens in Italy. I'm still expecting to get attacked every turn, but... So we weren't attacked by Romans, but look how many Gauls there are in the area. We have a lot of Gauls. We might want to deal with them. Let's... Oh, I don't have my... We'll take these troops from Rome. And let's send something up to Rome to appease them. These Scutarii. And... Train some... Slingers. We're going to build a tavern here so they will get a little happier soon. We'll send up this unit of Sam Knight mercenaries. And one unit of cavalry, maybe. Perfect. Now everyone's pretty much unhappy. In Ariminum, let's train up some slingers here as well, just in case we ever have the same situation where we can defend the city from the walls. We'll get some slingers in Ariminum and Aretium. I really liked that. And now that we have our heavy infantry and missile troops here, let's attack Captain Tertius. Let's take a look at these legionary cohorts. Ooh, brutal. Melee attack of 10, missile attack of 14, and total defense of 23 with good morale and good stamina. I think they're better than my troops, but we have way more troops. We'll have a morale advantage because we have Gurgury. We have missile troops and they don't. We should be able to handle them. Where'd they go? 
They didn't despawn, did they? That would be so stupid if they did. I mean, I'd be happy, but I think they despawned. Are they able to flee this way? Sometimes they're able to flee a crazy long distance, but I don't see them. I mean, if it worked, it worked. I'm happy with that. <laughs> All right, let's push north because we're going to need to fight off this Gallic army. And we're going to need more slingers down here in Capua, but they're training. Hopefully we don't get attacked by these Romans. And let's fight off some more Gauls. We want them out of our land. And bring our troops up to Oska. Feeling a lot better now that we have a nice big army in Oska. Can we land yet? Oh, we can land. Tingy. They left it undefended. I love them. They're so smart. We'll send our diplomat to... No, we don't want to offer them ceasefire. We want Tingy. Let's train up a bunch of siege towers. And what is, what's inside the city? Just one general. Okay. Done the turn. And yeah, we were attacked by those Gauls, so we'll have to deal with them this turn. They didn't send anyone to defend Tingy, so let's go ahead and take that. It should be nice and quick. I almost want to just auto-resolve it, but I haven't really done that at all yet this campaign, so I won't start now. All right, we're just going to push up one of our siege towers, take the wall, and then open the gates and let everyone in. We're not going to mess around with any mercenaries. No mercenaries. That did not work in Italy. It's not going to work today. So we're going to take these bull warriors. They're going to be the ones pushing into the city with naked fanatics guarding them. Okay, we've taken the walls of Tingi. Let's open the gateway. And we'll begin sending in our troops. Bull warriors will push up. We'll push up with our general. And our strongest units of naked fanatics. And then we're going to send this unit of Spanish mercenaries over here. Take the wall, just so we don't get hit by this tower as we march by it and let's push our troops into these streets okay we're gonna push this massive block onto the city center and bring the general up for morale Let's just, let's just fight them. This is going to be pretty quick. We want a little break of one of our weaker units, but nothing to worry about. We'll use rally troops. Seven, five, three. Yeah, he's gone. And that's the battle. We lost a few hundred naked fanatics, but honestly, we don't want to be paying for them anymore after this campaign anyways, so... Finally, we can take Tingi. I'm tempted to exterminate it, but I hope that doesn't affect trade too much. But I think I have to just because they're so unhappy. So we're going to exterminate Tingi. And let's take a look at what we were making in trade previously. We were making 4,100 in trade before this turn. Oh my goodness. This city alone is making 2,400 in trade. And Cordoba is now making 1,959. Over 1,000 of that is just training with Tingi. Actually, 1,400 is just training with Tingi. So this is going to improve our economy massively. Now in Tingi, let's go ahead and bring down the tax rate. We'll knock down this. Oh, I want to knock down this awesome temple, but it has an increase in tradable goods, which is helping a lot right now with trade, I believe. So we're not going to do that. We'll build the tavern just to get that public order in check, and let's build some basic scutarii to guard the city. And hopefully Tingi will be a little bit happier soon. As soon as possible, I would like to send these units over and just keep taking Carthaginian cities. Now that we've made them angry, we want to get them out of the game as quickly as possible. Let's fight off some Scipii ships. Fight off this Gallic ship. At some point, we're going to need to retrain this fleet. It's not doing its best. Let's take a look at Italy. So we have this nice big army here. 
We would control Gurgury of Rodi, but this Gallic army is here already. This is not the best. Hmm. We can't even reach with the cavalry only. Let's pull this army a little bit closer unless there are any troops pushing in from the south. No. We're going to get a little closer and next turn we'll fight off this Gallic army. Okay, let's end the turn. I want to see how much our economy is doing better now that we've taken Tangi off the Carthaginians. And these Gauls are pesky. They're attacking Riminum as well. But we made a profit that turn. Let's see how much we profited. So we profited 14,655 that turn, but 12,670 of that was from looting Tingi. So we actually profited about 2,000 denarii, which I'm very happy with. This is kind of a precarious situation in Italy right now. We have two Brutii armies, Captain Julianus and Tertius, which are pretty strong, honestly, near Capua and Rome. And then we have both of our northern cities besieged by their Gauls. All right, let's fight this army in the field. And unfortunately, we're not going to have access to the full reinforcing army because it's only going to let me have two full stacks of troops. It's not going to give me that second army until these troops begin to die. But we will, I still think, be able to handle them. They didn't bring any missile troops except this unit of skirmishers. So our two units of slingers will have an advantage there. We just have so much cavalry and they don't have a general. I think we can handle them. Let's go ahead and start the battle and hopefully it works out. So we have a nice flat field, no woods nearby, no hill advantages. So it's good and bad. Um, let's pull up our front line the same way we did last time. We'll have the two units of bull warriors in the front, uh, kind of angled somewhat so they can't be flanked as easily. Put them on fire at will in guard mode, and then we'll put the slingers out to the side with skirmisher mode on in case they need to flee. And then we'll draw up the cavalry in a nice wide flank over here, just so they can push all the way around the enemy, hit them in the side. Let's get this unit of 34 cavalry kind of off of the flank, because we don't want them actually fighting. They'll break too easily. We'll grab a unit off of this flank to lend to this side. Perfect. And we have... Three more units of cavalry showing up, which will be able to help out once they get on the battlefield. Let's kind of just take it slow, let them push into us and make a mistake. And I think this should go fine. I'm a little worried about this unit of noble cavalry. We might have to ward them off pretty early. Yeah, they're charging directly at my slingers. So let's take all but two of these cavalry and push them forward a little bit they're gonna fight off this noble cavalry and then these two units over here can fight off these barbarian cavalry this noble cavalry is gonna take some slings so that'll hurt looks like they're a bit discouraged we're still gonna charge after them because if we can catch them and just break them that's a good thing And then they're taking javelins in the side from the bull warriors. Okay, let's pause it. Over here we've caused a break. Let's see if we can get another break into these swordsmen. We'll go to this flank of cavalry over here. Let's target the furthest unit of swordsmen over here and try and start a break over here as well. How's morale doing? Very well. Everyone's eager. And their warlord is, well, he's not a warlord, but he's their noble cavalry. He's shaken. Let's keep our general nearby in case we need him. We have 100 units of heavy cavalry because he's the faction leader, I believe. We killed their general, so that's great. That's going to cause morale issues for the whole army. We don't want to fight these chosen swordsmen. Let's fight out through these warband over here because they'll have morale issues. And let's push these bull warriors in to fight these chosen swordsmen. We've got another break. Let's stay away from these chosen swordsmen if we can. Just get out of the fighting. Actually, we broke a unit of chosen swordsmen. We'll kill them. This unit will fight this unit of chosen swordsmen. Let's get our general out of there and send this cavalry over to deal with these. No, not chosen swordsmen. Deal with these swordsmen over here. We want to just not take any direct fights with our cavalry if we can avoid it. We'll attack these skirmishers over here. 
And then with this cavalry, let's fight these swordsmen. How's the morale over here? Okay, we're not doing so well against the chosen swordsmen with our bull warriors, but it's okay. We have cavalry coming in. Perfect, these units of chosen swordsmen are breaking, so that's fantastic. Let's get these slingers out of the way. We're gonna turn off skirmish mode so they don't run in a random direction. We want them running in this specific direction to get it to safety. Let's get this unit to safety as well. Um, so we have a break over here, but this unit has not broken and we don't want our bull warriors to break. So let's do that. These units of cavalry have easily killed these swordsmen. Let's send these two units to chase down these and we'll have one of our units pick up this routing unit of swordsmen. Um, this unit will attack this warband and I believe we're doing fairly well. What's over here? Wavering Chosen Swordsman, they've broken, perfect. Let's see if we can hunt down these Chosen Swordsmen with our General. It's a little bit risky, uh, but we'll send in some reinforcing Light Cavalry. We'll have him do rally troops before he hits the unit, just in case, so we don't lose the General. Didn't even have to be using the reinforcements. All right, at just the last moment, we'll use rally troops. Perfect, use it now, so he falls back. And they're shaken, they're wavering, they're broken. Perfect. Will we catch these units over here? Looks like, yes, this unit of warband will rout and be slaughtered. And what else is even left on the battlefield? I don't know what percentage of the army we killed. Um, let's, let's reinforce these units over here. Perfect, this warband broke. We killed 96% of the enemy army, so they will just despawn. That was a great battle. So we lost 261 mostly cavalry and killed 2,300 Gauls. I'll take that as a win any day. This is why you bring generals to fights. I'll swap out my weaker units of cavalry for stronger ones in Iridium. We don't have enough move points to make it to this other Gallic army this turn, but they don't have any siege equipment yet, so we'll be okay. Honestly, I could probably sally forth. I'll probably do that. Let's drop off these weak units in Oretium, and we'll send up stronger units. We want this army nice and strong. Yeah, three more. Yeah, I do really need another general in Italy now because we want a northern general and a southern general and we just don't have that at the moment. Now that we've dropped off this army in Tingi, I'm considering using this fleet to drop off a general in Italy after we've kind of dropped off part of this army somewhere in Carthage. Keep bringing these troops up. Yeah, we have a nice strong force up in Oska now in case we get attacked up there. I feel pretty safe. Let's build another unit of slingers in Capua and in Rome. I know I'm kind of slingers happy right now, but they're just, they're, they were so convincingly good in that battle. And let's fight off these Scipii. Next turn we'll get them. All right, last thing we'll do this part is fighting off this army. Got a good commander for Gurgury. How good is he getting? He's actually getting really good and he's only 32. Wish we didn't have a cackling crone. That's a really horrible trait. You know what? Let's let's see if we can fight off this army with just what we have here. Because there's only four units, and we have two units of slingers. What do they have? Two units of chosen swordsmen, one unit of cavalry, and one unit of swordsmen. I think we can handle them. We're going to try it. So we'll put our slingers up on the wall. They won't be able to reach because this isn't a huge city. Obviously, they don't have that height advantage that they had at Capua. But we'll also have our peasants as nearby as I can get them. Well, they're not going to be able to reach because they can't spawn in the street. They're too fat. So let's actually just send one of our units. We'll send this weak unit of Longshow Calvary here. We might send them out as bait to try and get the enemy to push forward into these slingers. Meanwhile, let's send some units out the side gate here um, with the general. And we'll just have them go outside of the city in case they're needed to wrap up anyone who flees, that kind of thing. All right, let's start the battle, push them outside of the city and push the bait cavalry outside of the city as well. We just want them to kind of chase after this unit and hopefully run into the slingers. 
Because Chosen Swordsmen are great, but Slingers, I think, are effective against armor. So Chosen Swordsmen are less great in that case. Let's send the bait unit. I'm tempted to attack these Chosen Swordsmen and actually hit them, but I at least want to get close. I just want to tempt them to follow me. Come on, are they running from the battle? They're running, that's fine. I'm happy for them to just leave. Okay. Let's not get stuck up in a fight with them. We're gonna get out of here. We're gonna walk, run, walk, run, walk, run. We wanna lead them back to the slingers. We want to give them a chance of catching me. Not really a real chance. They're very slow because they have all this armor on. Okay, they're running again. Let's hit them in the back again. We didn't lose any troops in that first charge. So I'll do it again. Back up. We've killed 40 of them. We still haven't lost any of ours. I'll just keep doing this over and over again if they let me. Not very happy. I mean, I wouldn't be either if I was them. Let's get out of there. We might lose one or two here. Yeah, we lost a couple. How's our morale doing? Eager. Yeah, they're they're confident because they're just hitting them over and over again. Let's hit one more time and get out of there. And then let's send over our other cavalry who's outside the city right now. And I wonder if we can send our slingers over to this part of the wall and if they would have a shot. Let's just try it because they are really far downhill of us, so it might work. Worst case, we can kind of tempt them slightly forward with this cavalry. What is happening? <laughs> These units are just throwing themselves off the walls. Stop! They're so stupid, they just killed 24 men by walking off the walls. I've never seen that before. Okay. Y'all are idiots, jeez. Okay, um... Can you get like here? Or are you gonna kill yourself again? That was horrible. The most troops we've lost in this battle that 2% is from people jumping off the walls. I guess I'm not that good of a leader if they're literally jumping off the walls. All right, let's get this cavalry close and let's just kind of charge into this chosen source with once. I mean, get out, get out. Okay, they didn't get out, but Can they follow, please. Ah, oh, shame, they're not following. I'm gonna have to get a unit of slingers off of the walls. I kind of, let me try tempting them one more time. I know this is crazy. Well, let's let's see just how much they let me get in their space before they follow me. Because if I can completely surround this unit, it will have some morale issues. Okay. So they're charging. We can get out of there without breaking. We might break. I mean, this happens. This is what you have when you don't have a general and you don't have heavy infantry, so. Worst case, we have a reinforcing army next turn. I just want to get this done now. You gonna get out of there? No, you're an idiot. So stupid sometimes. Come on, just charge after me. Okay, I've tried multiple times to get them to march towards my slingers and they're not doing it. So we're going to bring the slingers to them.
We managed to do decent damage to them, honestly. Surprisingly, because this hasn't been working. But taking out 40 of these guys and uh, 60 of these Chosen Swordsmen. It's been an okay result. All right, here's going to be the strategy. We're going to drop all of our best units of cavalry in a line right here. And this is also going to be backed up by the tower. So if they charge this far forward, they're going to have issues. Then we're going to use our slingers slightly in front of this line to fire down at them. And if they chase us, we'll just retreat into the wall of cavalry. Let's turn off fire at will, because we want to fire into specific units. We can't quite reach them yet. Let's push a little bit closer. Let's turn on fire at will, just I want to see when we're in range. Okay, one of the units is in range. I have my finger on the pause button in case I need to pull them back. They're firing at the swordsmen, so that's okay. I'd rather be firing at the chosen swordsmen, but it's all right. Okay, pause and let's pull back. Let's unpause, run, run. Okay. And they're not willing to fight, perfect. We'll just keep doing this. Run. Okay, we're, we're unable to run, but now we can fight this uh, general's unit. Kill him. Perfect. That was the break we needed. These swordsmen are broken. This chosen swordsman is broken, and then this one will break as well. Come on, just send everyone in. Perfect. They broke. Okay, we took a lot of losses. This was totally messy, but we managed to fight them off. So that's all I really wanted the battle we killed more of them than they killed the boss all right let's heal up in aluminum because that was kind of messy and then i can send this army south next turn to fight off the broody eye i want to start taking their cities this has been a little bit too slow for me i think that's a great place to end this part we had three pretty ambitious goals for the start of this episode. We said we would get rid of the elephant army outside of Palma so we could free up our army that was just camping with it. We said we would kill the Roman armies that were outside of Capua, which we did. We killed a lot of Romans today. And finally, we said that we would fix the economy by taking Tingi from the Carthaginians and reestablishing trade with Cordoba. Look what we've done. Look at this beautiful trade. Very nice. And our economy is basically fixed now. It's stabilized at least. In addition, while there are still some enemies about, we fought off some Gallic invaders, fought off a bunch of Romans, and we basically have secured our land here. So we're not imminently about to lose any of these cities. Next part, we will march Gurgury of Rodi south, kill these Roman armies, and hopefully take Croton and Tarentum, finally consolidating all of Italy for myself. We'll have another video up this Friday um, at 7 p.m. MST. We have a video every Wednesday and Friday, 7 p.m. MST. Um, also, I'm going to do a bonus video this week, which will go up this weekend, and I hope you enjoy that as well. I think it's a great video. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, hit the like button, leave a subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you already are subscribed. Thank you so much. Have a great day.